Hi to all, how's it going? I would like to start this video by thanking the brave people that thought that supporting me on Patreon was a good idea and on a personal note acknowledge that they helped me on a really important personal side of my life. To make a long story short, a small part of those money were used to apply for the Italian citizenship, a thing that, uh, a thing that I was eager to do for years, given that I live here for a long, long time. This uh, and a busy work schedule have delayed making videos a bit, but hopefully we are back on track. Thank you so much, it means so much to me and as a side note I wanted to let you know that those money are also partly going back to the developers and uh, partly getting used to push ahead with the CNC project, project so we can experiment and improve even more. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, um, as this is not uh, quite a beginner tutorial, I will make a lot of use of the Pi menus and other shortcuts to speed th things up. I will link the tutorial on how to set them up uh, somewhere here on the video. Also important in this tutorial, I'm using uh, the refine property of bodies set by default to true. You can set this in the edit menu, preferences, part design, general tab. Our goal for this video is to give it a shot at uh, in-context modeling. For this purpose, we will uh, model a enclosure for a Raspberry Pi for 3D printing that hopefully will follow the cutouts uh, positioning referenced uh, from the board. It will also sport a complex shape for the separation plane of the two halves and that uh, is a full-blown tutorial in itself. Because of this, the tutorial will be split in at least two parts to, uh, to keep things from being uh, over an hour long. The board model was downloaded uh, from GrabCAD in the step format and you can get it uh, at the address that you see on the screen. We will start by first importing our um, board model, so go to File, Import and select the Raspberry Pi Step model. Let's create a new part that will be active and uh, rename it as Raspberry Pi Case. Go ahead and uh, grab the, the imported model and uh, let's move it inside our newly created part. As you can see, the board is rotated in a weird position, so right click on the voice in the tree view, choose transform and we will uh, rotate the board for 90 degrees. Press escape to dismiss the tool and I think I will make the combo view always visible. To have a good idea of where things are positioned in 3D space, it is always helpful to have the, the axis cross visible. You can enable it in view, toggle axis cross, or you can use the AC keyboard shortcut. Move to the front view, select the Raspberry Pi part, and uh, let's change the position in the Z direction by 6 millimeters. Make sure that the Raspberry Pi case uh, is the active container and create a new body. Rename this body as uh, Master Case. While making sure that the Master Case body is the active container, expand uh, the tree of the Raspberry Pi step part, select the main board body and create a subshape binder. Bear in mind that in uh, Link Stage 3 you can uh, always use the eye icon to hide or unhide objects for uh, a better view or to check for collisions. This uh, shape binder will be the proxy geometry that we will use to position the various features that we need uh, on our Raspberry um, case. And we will uh, use the same techniques uh, to make the cutouts for the various ports that are present on the Raspberry Pi. Click on an empty space to select nothing and we will create a new sketch on the XY plane. Let's create a rectangle. Right click to dismiss the tool select 
two vertices and the origin of our sketch, press S for symmetric. We will give this uh, edge a um, vertical dimension of 64 millimeters, so Shift V for vertical 64 millimeters, and this edge will be a horizontal dimension, so Shift H of 90.5 Now that we have a fully constrained sketch, we close the sketch and we will pad it for 25 millimeters. Press OK. OK, so let's compact a bit our tree view. Select the master case body, press Ctrl D for the material properties. We will choose plastic as material. We will give it a orangey color and a 50% transparency. This way we can see how things work uh, inside our model. So close this view. We can always hide and unhide the board model for, to check for collisions. So if we switch our view to shadow view, notice how the case uh, doesn't cast any shadows. To remedy to that, we need to select the file name voice in the tree view, go all the way down and change the transparent shadow from false to true. This will give you transparent shadows with a small price in display performance. So at this point we need to select our top face and we will make a thick solid. We need uh, to have a thickness of 2 mm. I want to make the thickness inwards and the joint type uh, I want to be in an intersection. Press OK and we have our hollow box. I did this because uh, there is currently no way to use the thickness inside the closed body in uh, FreeCAD and this is a workaround. At a later point uh, in the video we will create the top face for, um, for our case. You will see that during this tutorial I will make uh, heavy use of the eye icon to hide and un unhide the objects uh, in the 3D view. So let's go ahead and hide our board model. I want to hide all, uh, also the last feature that I made so that I have visible only the shape binder that um, binds uh, to the main board uh, model. Okay, so at this point we need to reference uh, the holes uh, present in the main board uh, component uh, of our um, Raspberry board. So we need to carefully select the bottom arcs of the holes on the existing shape binder. So select this edge and this edge and we slowly go through all of them it is important to be careful that we have the right, the right edges selected. Okay. Let's control this one also. And we need to create a new shape binder that uh, it is based on our selection. It is important to check that the shape binders uh, property fuse is set to true, and also the make make face property is set to true. Let's hide the, our original binder, unhide the last feature of our model, move to perspective view, and making sure that the binder is selected, we will pad it. We will pad it reversed and we will choose up to face. We need to select the face that we want to end up to and will be the bottom one. We also need to, uh, to give it uh, a uh, one millimeter fit tolerance and this will make so that uh, the extrusion is one millimeter wider than the original holes. holes click OK 
and let's move to perspective view. Notice how by using uh, shape binders as a reference geometry, the features uh, on our model will uh, closely follow the position of our main board. So if we try to transform our board and refresh the view, take a look at how the model updates itself. Okay, so it is now time to make the various cutouts for the ports uh, on the Raspberry. So go ahead and hide our last bed. Select some convenient faces on that are located on the Raspberry model. Let's see something here. And we have another port here. With this uh, reference uh, faces selected, we will create another shape binder. And this um, shape binder for a easier navigation of the tree view, we can rename it as ports reference. So switch to the perspective view and hide the raspberry model. So we are left with only the less shape, uh, shape binder visible. And hide also the main board uh, binder and we will uh, rename this also. And let's uh, make visible the last pad again. To create the cutouts on the side uh, of our uh, case, we need to create a new sketch that will be placed on the YZ plane. Hide the pad and unhide the main board uh, reference. So let's import some external geometry. I need uh, these edges here. And we can always hide and unhide uh, the board model to have a, a rough idea of uh, what we are doing. Right click to dis dismiss our tool, click the rectangle tool. Let's create the cutout for the Ethernet port, another one for the to USB hubs. So let's start constraining uh, this sketch. Hide the Raspberry model. Switch to construction geometry. I need a vertical line. So select this vertex, uh, this vertex and this one and press symmetric. So it seems that we have this point on the object uh, constraint that we don't really want. So I need to go ahead and find it. Right click and delete this constraint. Now we can move again our sketch. I want this point to be, to be fixed on this line. So Shift O on your keyboard. And I want the external vertices to be symmetric to the center one. So press S on your keyboard. So let's say that I want a vertical dimension of uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. So shift V 0 0.5. Here I want the same here also. And uh, horizontal dis uh, distance between between these two point of uh, 0 0.5 millimeters. So shift H for horizontal 0 0.5. And we have a partially constrained uh, sketch. We can check for collisions with our Ethernet port, and it seems uh, pretty okay with me. 
perhaps uh, 0.7 this distance here would be better. 0.7 Okay and in here also Okay, so let's go ahead. I want these two lines to be equal, so press E on your keyboard after selecting uh, them. This one and this one equals. Okay, so uh, if I unhide my Raspberry model, I can see that I can uh, pretty much fix uh, this point uh, to our previously imported uh, line that references the board unhide the board model select this vertex and the line press shift O on your keyboard I want to go ahead and give these two vertices a horizontal dimension of 0.7 millimeters so shift H 0 0.7 and in here a vertical dimension of 0.7 millimeters. I now actually need a way of creating a symmetry between uh, the external contour uh, of our cutout and the actual port on the board so I will import another piece of geometry from the shape binder I need this and this one also we will create a bit of construction geometry and let's make it tangent to the this geometry select this vertex this vertex here and this one here press s for symmetric on your keyboard and we will do the same with the vertexes on top s for symmetric and we had we have this geometry also constrained we need to do the same thing on the last cutout so let's we have a fully constrained sketch let's close it and hide the last pad and we will make a pocket reverse the direction of the pocket and choose type through all press ok and we have our cutouts if we unhide the raspberry pi model we see that we are pretty much set it up. So if we take a closer uh, look at our geometry, uh, we can see that it actually clashes with our case. And to remedy to that, we will again use a shape binder. So hide our last pocket. So let's uh, go ahead and select the faces that we want. I will switch the selection on top option to help me a little bit with this selection. Always press the control key to select multiple faces. And we need these ones. We will create a new shape binder based on this geometry. Let's hide the pi geometry and hide the last pocket. And by selecting the last um, binder, we will make a pocket. We choose to be symmetric to plane, five millimeters, and we will give it a 0 0.2 millimeter fit tolerance. We can hide the preview, press OK. And now we have a nice cutout for our front ports. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, create pretty much a similar thing uh, for the other ports uh, present uh, on the board. So create a new sketch. This time I want it to, I want it, uh, to be on the XZ plane.
and perhaps this can be 2.5 millimeters we have a fully constrained sketch let's close the sketch unhide our last pocket we will pocket again show preview dimension through all and of course we want it reversed press ok and we are pretty much done with this side also so we have one more, more port to to do and it is actually the SAD card slot so select nothing create a new sketch I want to make a new sketch in the YZ plane let's hide our last pocket close the sketch unhide our last pocket and as before let's pocket through all press ok and we will see that the sketch actually pockets from the YZ plane through all the model to remedy to that we can actually um, move the sketch and that will also move the start point of our pocket and I actually need to work with the attachment offset so in the Z direction I need to move it if I can see it okay do something like minus 30 and if we do that we can see our pocket updated in real time this is the part where uh, the refined property set to true uh, become uh, becomes important if you remember we've uh, talked about it at the beginning of the tutorial and if you don't have uh, the refined property for the feature set to true uh, by default you can always select a, a particular feature and you have the refined property you can uh, enable it or disable it on a per feature basis anyway we need to have it uh, set to true select the top uh, external edges of uh, our case and uh, let's create a shape binder it is important that the make face property is set to true have the last uh, shape binder selected make a pad we want to make a pad for two millimeters uh, I want it to be to the inside so I will reverse it click OK and we have made the top of our case at this point make sure that the selection on top is enabled select the external vertical edges of our case and make a fillet of four millimeters press OK now select a random edge and because we have selection on top enabled we can actually select the inner edge of our case let's make another fillet and this one needs to be two millimeters press OK I want to have a nice angled top and bottom edge so I will select one of the arc uh, I will select the two arcs here and I want to make a chamfer on the selected edges a one millimeter chamfer works for me so press OK I also want to have some nice chamfer on these uh, cutouts for the ports so select this edge this edge and this edge here so we will make chamfer it will fail because the value is too big so we will try by with 0 0.5 millimeters and we slowly add the edges that we want to chamfer so I'm pretty happy with the result press OK 
select the master case object control D to control its appearance we will toggle off the transparency AC on your keyboard to hide the axis cross and let's turn on the shadow to admire our model in all his glory so this is it for part one for the uh, so this is it for uh, part one of the tutorial in the next part we will try to create a fairly complex uh, cutout uh, shape uh, for the two halves uh, of our uh, raspberry case thank you for sticking till the end and i'll see you in the next one